Hey everyone, welcome to this weekend's video update for pro members. Today is Friday, May 7th. Hope everybody had a great week of trading. Uh, let's touch on the markets overall, then we will give you an update on the day trading results for the week, and then jump into our alerts and current positions. So to start with, looking at SPX. Uh, at the time I'm recording this, it's 11 a.m. Central on Friday, so still got a few hours left in the cash session, but you can see the S&P 500 took a little bit of a dip and now ripping back to all-time highs once again. And you can see on the short-term uh, volatility indicator, uh, IV is just getting annihilated today. And assuming prices stay up, uh, that'll continue throughout the day, I would suspect. Uh, looking at the NASDAQ, NASDAQ not back up to all-time highs. Had a little bit of a nasty flush earlier this week. Uh, now it's bouncing. I wouldn't doubt if we do see a reversal back to these recent lows into early next week. Um, but we'll we'll see what happens. I mean, obviously nobody knows. It could it could continue and rip back up to a new high itself. Uh, but that was a pretty nasty pretty nasty dip, and I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt if it kind of uh, gives us a little follow through at least at least another uh, an another flush lower. So I did put on some short delta today, but we do have on some long delta positions too. So we are very delta neutral in our overall directional bias in our portfolio. So we're gonna we're gonna play from from both sides and continue to add different positions. Obviously, implied volatility low uh, is low. If you look at the 252 day indicator. I mean, the IV percentile is at six, IV ranks only at 10. So, very low implied volatility compared to where it's been uh, earlier in the year. So, we're not selling a lot of premium. We are doing more directional plays, but we're playing them from both sides. So, we've got some long positions, some short positions. And the anticipation is, you know, hopefully we can get some kind of big two sided action, some ping pong back and forth, and potentially book profits on both sides. Just keep in mind, I've been saying this, directional plays are a lot less, a lot lower probability plays. So you want to keep your position size small, stay engaged. And, you know, at some point we'll get a, a spike in implied volatility where we can add on some new uh, premium selling type strategies, but we'll still continue to put on some iron ducks. We'll still do our weekly double calendars, and then we'll be mixing in some, uh, some directional plays with opportunities where we see fit. So, that is the plan. Uh, taking a look at a couple other markets, gold and silver back on the move. Uh, gold making a nice push here the last few days. Uh, silver on its way up as well. And the, and the bonds continue to trade sideways. You know, if you take a look at uh, forward slash ZB, uh, you know, I mean, these things have been pretty, you know, started to climb, 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 and then they've been pretty sideways the last few weeks. So we've got a position in bonds that's benefiting from that narrow range. So we'll talk about that. So that's kind of what's going on in the markets. Let's take a look before we get into the alerts, give you a quick update on the day trading. A uh, nice week of day trading plus 4,899 on the week. Uh, and that was just four days because we did not do any live stream or day trading today on Friday. So nice week, nice little bounce back after a red week last week. Uh, on the mighty 90s, uh, over 1,800. A really nice week on the pairs trades, over 2,200. Took a little bit bigger size on a couple of these. And then uh, on the runners, plus about 750. And that puts us year to date up a little over 34,000 year to date on all of our day trades. And then total going all the way back to uh, the be uh, end of August, uh, we're now up over 70K for our day trade. So good stuff there. With that, let's go to our alerts and go through all of our alerts for the week, starting with Amazon. So in Amazon, uh, added a new iron duck, did this one with 11 days to expiration. We had a nice little swift down move in Amazon, so looked for something to put a duck on. And in this case, we chose Amazon. Now Amazon did come down even more after we put this on. Uh, let's see, I think we put it on after this big move down and it's come down even more since then. So if we take a look at our risk profile, you can see it's dead centered right in the middle of our duck head. It did get down to this area here, nowhere close to our exit point, but uh, bounced back nicely here the last couple days. Uh, so, so hopefully this will hold. This one is a 515 expiration. So we'll hold it close to expiration. Uh, obviously if it falls apart, we'll need to exit early, but if not, uh, hopefully we get a chance at a duck head. 
Uh, next trade, QQQ Iron Duck. We also added one in, in Qs on their way down. Did this one with 17 days to expiration. So just varying the symbols that we trade, laddering into these ducks, uh, varying the days to expiration. Uh, very high probability plays. And so we'll continue to do that. If we take a look at the Qs, we've actually got a few different positions in the Qs. Let's take a look at our Iron Duck first. And you can see prices bounce back since we put this on, so it's well up the beak. Uh, still have uh, about a 25% chance that it could get back down to the max profit. Oops, I got to change my dates here. Got about a 20% chance that it could get back into the duckhead area here. So if it stays here or starts to move higher into next week, we may just close this one early once it has a very little chance of getting back to that max profit area. Uh, but we'll continue to hold and manage those just like we teach in the course. QCOM did a closing trade in QCOM. We had put on a, a post earnings long call in QCOM uh, and we ended up closing it out, just taking it off. We didn't, you know, we're not, we didn't want to wait for, uh, for a max loss on that one because what I'm looking at here is so price opened above its expected move. And so the most uh, high probability play is to, uh, is that price is going to stay steady and potentially move higher. Well, this is the expected move after earnings. You can see it came down, held there, but then the next day it fell. And so what I'm looking at on these is, you know, a lot of times that uh, expected move will act as support. And then after that, sometimes the, you know, the previous price peak or the previous price level before earnings will act as nice support. It came right down to there. But once it broke through that level, uh, you know, that was kind of my, my, uh, line in the sand to go ahead and exit and say, you know what, I'm not sure this trade's going to work. Now, then it kind of dropped even more Then it chopped around and it has kind of bounced up the last couple of days. But, you know, with these, you're better off just kind of closing them out, taking a loss, moving on uh, instead of, you know, because if, if it keeps going, you're going to have about double the loss that we took on the trade. So out of QCOM, Baidu did a closing adjusting trade. So we had, we put on a long put diagonal for some short delta and for a downside directional play. Uh, if we took a look at Baidu. So we actually, we actually put this on. So I had, Baidu seen some real weakness and when it bounced up here, we actually put it on and then price just kind of chopped around for, for quite some time. So we ended up closing out our other trade because it was getting near expiration. And then we turned around and put it right back on because I anticipated we'd still see some further downside. And that's, that certainly happened. And so we've benefited from that. So we closed out, we put it on with three contracts, uh, closed out one. So we still have two spreads left. And you can see, you know, our max risk with these two left is 299 bucks. And we're up almost close to $400 on. Uh, so we're up almost 200% uh, on these remaining. We took one off with, uh, what was it? I think, uh, uh, yeah, booked a 65% profit on that one piece, holding two thirds of it to uh, to squeeze out some more profit. So uh, next week we'll we'll start to um, phase out of this as well. If we get some more downside, especially, we'll close out another contract and then you know hold the other one a little bit closer to expiration. We've got some good time left on this. So as long as this thing doesn't rip back up, which it certainly could. Uh, but I like how weak Baidu is and Baidu is staying, you know, going into that earnings announcement. So we'll continue to hold at least a piece of that to see if we can maximize our profits in Baidu. XLK rolling adjusting trades. So this is one of our short delta plays. It's a long put vertical. Rolled this from May to June. We are over 50% of max profit. So we just rolled it out, extended duration, and adjusted the strikes accordingly. So if we take a look at XLK. You can see this has bounced back since we did this. So price is about right here when we did the roll and it's pushed up. So it's a little bit out of range now, uh, but we're going to hold that for that short delta exposure. Like I said, we're pretty delta neutral overall in our portfolio right now. And, you know, I think I, I get questions about this a lot, but, you know, really when it comes to the amount of delta, we like to kind of stay within a range. We always like to carry a little bit of short delta uh, for those swift down moves that we might see. Uh, but as long as you're kind of, the biggest thing is being aware of your overall directional position with your portfolio. So I don't care if you want to be really short, or I don't care if you want to be really long, just as you, uh, just as long as you're aware. And, and the way that we do that is we beta weight our portfolio to SPY. So we can kind of get an apples to apples comparison 
of how, how directionally biased our portfolio is, is in one direction or another. And so right now we're pretty delta neutral. We've got a tiny bit of short delta, uh, but not, not too much. And, and that's, you know, that's benefited us because the market has obviously been on fire to the upside. In hindsight, would we have wished we had more long delta? Of course, but you never know. And so that's why we carry a little bit of short delta. We have a lot of range bound trades on. So we want to carry a little bit of that short delta because the market, as we know, takes the elevator down and the stair steps up. Uh, all right, so NVIDIA did an opening trade, did a long put diagonal here in NVIDIA, and then did a, did the exact same trade in Netflix. So this was just adding in some short delta. When we had that big flush in the NASDAQ earlier this week, and we got a little bit of a bounce, I was just looking to add some short delta in some of these weaker NASDAQ-related stocks. So the ones that we chose were NVIDIA and Netflix. So if we take a look at NVIDIA, NVIDIA's got earnings coming up on the 26th of May. So we will exit this before then. Uh, you can see price has bounced up a tiny bit. So we're down a few bucks on this right now, but looking for some downside to benefit that trade. And then the same thing in Netflix. Uh, this has bounced up a little bit since we put it on, uh, but a nice little move down will, will get us a nice profit. So uh, and Netflix already announced earnings, so we don't have any earnings to, uh, to uh, worry about there, but we will take this off before expiration. SPX opening trade opened a weekly double calendar earlier this week. Uh, this was on the on May 6th. So I guess that was Thursday and did this one with eight days in the front, 11 in the back. And then we did another one today. So I'll get to that and I'll go then I'll go to the platform for SPX uh, and then Square. So Square had earnings uh, Thursday evening after the bell. And so it opened up this morning uh, above its expected move. So we put on a post earnings short put vertical, just like we teach in the course, looking for some steady to higher prices in square. Did this one with 14 days to expiration to give us a little time. And so if we take a look at SQ, you can see we put this on, it's already up about 80, 80 bucks. It's kind of been bouncing around uh, here. And so if we take a look at the charts, you can see here was here's the earnings, here's the expected move. It opened above the expected move, kind of came down, touched it. That's when we got in. It's bounced up a little bit. So looking for kind of steady to potentially higher prices in square to benefit that one. And then the Qs, because I did put on another long play, I wanted to kind of help balance our portfolio and, and I didn't want to get too long. So I wanted to add some QQQ short delta. So with this one, we put on a diagonal spread, a put diagonal spread. Did this one with 21 days in the front week. So if we take a look at that, again, like I talked about, it had that big flush. Now we're getting a good bounce, but I wouldn't doubt if we get a little bit of a rollover. Uh, so that's part of the reason I put this on as well. So if we take a look, that was our duck. Uh, this is our diagonal. So again, it's kind of pushed up a little bit since we put this on, but a swift move lower will book us some good profits in the queues. And then we've also got this other short delta piece, uh, which is a vertical spread. Uh, we're up about 300 and some dollars since we did our last adjustment roll on that one. Uh, so if we get some more downside in the queues next week, we will roll that one. Uh, we'll, we'll take our strikes and we'll just push them closer to price and continue to keep that on for short delta exposure in the portfolio. And then SPX, here is that other weekly double calendar that we just put on today. So we've got two of those on. Uh, so here's the one we just put on today. Pretty, pretty well centered. I gave it a little bit more room to the upside because this one has more room to the downside. So just to kind of help widen that out all, all uh, between the two, this one pushed all the way up. We just put it on yesterday. Push, has pushed up all the way up to the near the break even point. Uh, but we'll continue to hold this. Remember the way we trade these, the highest probability way to trade these is the most profitable way to trade them is you know you take them off at one or zero days to expiration or if you do have an explosive move out of the range we uh we cut these out at about 50 percent of our max loss so in this case we've got about a 700 dollar buying power and risk and so if it if we get down about 350 bucks we'll just close this out if it does continue to push higher if not if it moves lower it'll move right back into center and then we'll manage these both uh later next week 
And then lastly, Zoom. We had a long call diagonal in Zoom that we put on. We were looking for some upside momentum in Zoom. Just never got it. It just kind of chopped around and then has really fallen apart. So we ended up just closing that out today. Uh, those options expire today, so we closed out those uh, for a uh, for loss. So here are the rest of our positions. We've got a long put vertical in ES. You can see prices moved out of out of range there. So we need a little bit of downside to get back into range on that one. That one is in uh, May. So we've got 14 days left on that one. So uh, it's potentially next week. We'll look to, uh, to roll that out to keep short Delta in our portfolio on that one. In ZB and bonds, we've got this short strangle that we've been managing. Uh, you can see I mentioned earlier, first thing in this video, that bonds have just been trading really flat. We're up about 360 on this one since we did our, our last adjustment. So we've got plenty of time left on this one, still 49 days until expiration. So we'll be holding this one for a little while. Uh, Apple, another one of our short delta plays. This is a long put vertical. You can see price is well within a range. We're up a little over 100 now. We were, we were close to 50% of max profit. I was just holding it to see if we get a little bit more. And if we do into next week specifically, I'll, I'll roll this one. Now we're out in June, so we're probably not going to roll out yet, but we would roll our strikes closer to price, lock in that credit, and continue to hold that for some short delta exposure. Uh, Amazon, I think I mentioned this one. Yeah, that's our duck right in the middle of the duck head. Uh, Baidu, I mentioned that one. DE, DE's been a little bit of a thorn. This was a short delta play that we've that we've had on, and you can see with the chart of John Deere, this thing just keeps on pushing. Um, you know, I mean, look at this, look at this upside winner here, or excuse me, upside run. Uh, it's hitting new all time highs here as well. So hopefully we get some relief at a DE here shortly. Uh, and then pretty similar in DIA, uh, uh, the Dow has is, is really been strong here recently, hitting new all-time highs. And we've got a short call vertical in there that we need some downside price action to benefit. Uh, Facebook. So we've got a couple of other post-earnings plays here in Facebook. So again, Facebook opened above the expected move, which is notated by this red line here. And then uh, when it came down, we got long. It bounced up nicely. Uh, we're, we, you know, if it would have gone a little bit further, even that day or even into the next day, we were probably going to just take that off and book profits close to 50% of max. Uh, but it didn't, it, it kind of got flushed out with the rest of the NASDAQ came down. It did not, it, it, it uh, originally held support at that uh, expected move line, but then pushed through the next day. And again, like I was saying, kind of the, the, the recent price peaks or the price before the earnings announcement kind of act as support as well. Now it's, it's starting to bounce back up. It's back up above its expected move. Uh, so we'll see if this thing wants to continue to push and allow us to book some profits. We're pretty close to break even uh, right now on our Facebook trade. And then uh, Google, very, very similar trade, post earnings play. This one we're up about uh, almost $600 on uh, since we put this one on. Same thing, post earnings play, open above the expected move, dip down for a couple of days, now it's popped back up. So if we can get a little bit of upside momentum into next week, uh, we should be able to book a really nice profit there. IWM, another one of our short delta plays that's out of range, so we need a little downside to get back into range there. Netflix, I already showed you Netflix and NVIDIA and the Qs. Rut, we've got a duck in rut. Uh, price is hanging out right here in the duck beak. Uh, so still a decent chance it could come down into the duck head. This one has a 515 expiration. SMH, we've got this strangle that we've been managing, adjusted into a straddle. We're up uh, 479-ish dollars since we did our last roll, so we'll continue to manage that one. That one's out in June with uh, 42 days to expiration, so we still got a lot of time before we do anything there. Uh, SPX I mentioned, Square I mentioned, uh, and then XLK I mentioned. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. That's your update. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, we will see you on Monday. Have a great weekend. All you mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. And all you men, tell your mothers, happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Take care, everybody. See you next week.